Hi guys. Well, it is still a gray and gloomy Monday afternoon now in the collapse of everything on Monday, August 21st, 2023. And uh, so I guess you guys get a bonus chronicle of the collapse today. I, I really am going to get around to, as I been mentioning for a couple of days, I want to get into this uh, story on the overkill hypothesis about the latest research, how the noble savages uh, pretty much, you know, cleaned out what is now the United States uh, thousands of years before Honky ever got here. Uh, but we will save that myth of the noble savage rant for another day because, guys, I just, I, 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 I just can't stand it. Uh, so we're going to have a broken record rant that you have heard how many times before and how many more times are we going to have this rant again coming out of Business Insider on today's mainstream media. A country slightly bigger than Texas is projected to match the U.S. population by 2050, and it shows how radically the world is changing. Yes. Did you realize that I even mentioned, I can't even remember if I mentioned the fact that July 11th was World Population Day. I can't remember if I just did not have the stomach. Did I just imagine that ramp? But anyway, in case you missed it, July 11th was World Population Day. The annual United Nations designation is not only a chance to recognize, quote, the dreams, the dreams, I would say nightmares of all billion, all eight billion of us on our planet. <coughs> yes, close quote. As UN Doomer in Chief Antonio Guterres put it in a blog post on Tuesday, it is also a chance to take stock at just how rapidly the world around us is shifting. In just the past 12 months, just the past 12 months, the world's population topped 8 billion for the first time, and India overtook China as the most populous country in the world. But even as the global population hits new milestones, one of the buzziest, buzziest discussions is around the quote great people shortage as writers here at Insider have termed it. According to projections, China, Japan, Germany, and even the US are facing the possibility of population decline by 2100, which could come with some serious economic challenges. Yes. <clears throat> In contrast to the countries facing the possibility of an aging, shrinking populace, other parts of the world are set to take the baton of population growth in the coming decades. Perhaps the most notable of these rapid risers is Nigeria. Yes. As recently as 1982, Nigeria had fewer than 80 million people, which was probably already 79 million people too many. As recently as 1982, so 40 years ago, is that right? Uh, Nigeria had fewer than 80 million people and was outside the world's 10 most populous countries. 
Oh, in the 41 years since, Nigeria's population has nearly tripled to 225 million, moving up to sixth on the list. And that is not expected to slow down. According to the most recent UN projections, Nigeria will nearly double its population yet again by 2050 to an estimated 377 million people who should not have ever been born. In the process, the country will leapfrog Pakistan and Indonesia and end up in a virtual tie with the United States as the third most populous country in the world. That is incredible for a country that is just a little bit bigger than the area of Texas. <clears throat> Nigeria's stunning growth rate is also indicative of the entire African continent. According to the UN estimates, five of the eight countries expected to make up half of the world's population growth of the next 27 years are in Africa. In an interview with Africa News, yeah, I, I imagine that is uh, correct, uh, Tagisti Amare, the Deputy Director of the African Program Chatham House in London, pointed out that Africa is the fastest growing continent and the youngest, noting that 70%, 70% of Africa's population is under 30. Quoting Ms. Amare, quote, The population growth is, of course, partly explained by improvement in level and access to public health. And I'm going to break in here one more time saying you can thank Bill Gates. If you can thank one human being on this planet for that statistic, it is Bill Gates. You know how these right-wing overpopulation deniers are always talking about how Bill Gates, uh, Bill Gates, and I guess his, you, you know, his evil henchmen, are are orchestrating a depopulation agenda, uh, specifically in Sub-Saharan Africa. It's where these clueless morons will talk about. One more time, Bill Gates is more responsible for any human on this planet for the overpopulation problem in, in Sub-Saharan Africa. Okay? Uh, anyway, back to Ms. Amare. That, meaning Bill Gates, has led to a decrease in child mortality. And that by itself is good news. And the other good news is that also by having a young population, most African nations do not have the burden of a large elderly population that relies on taxes and pensions, which can be a strain on the economy. Hmm. She also noted that because of such a young populations, young population, countries like Nigeria are producing more workers in the tech industry, increasing, increasing the possibility that the solutions for issues that impact Africa such as climate change are developed in Africa. There you go. All right, we're going to have a young Nigerian 
come up with the solution to climate change. But now, Business Insider, in, it, in its never-ending quest to be fair and objective, takes a deep, penetrating look at the flip side. While there are plenty of positives, you know, plenty of positives about Nigeria and Africa as a whole, uh, doubling its population, while there are plenty of positives, there are also plenty of development issues that come with such a rapidly expanding population. Michael Herman, an, e an economic advisor with the United Nations Population Fund, told Africa News that without proper planning, it could be difficult to care for, educate, and employ a population growing that fast. Quote, they, I don't know whether he's talking uh, Nigeria uh, in particular or all of the, these different African countries, they have decided to meet the needs of people in terms of education, of health care, housing, food, water, energy, and security. They want, whoever this they is, the, the, this mythical they want to create full employment for the people and a growing population can raise the stakes in these efforts. It makes it harder to achieve these objectives, to achieve social progress, and also, and also, it might, it might come with growing pressures on the environment. Close quote. Uh, do you think so? Regardless, of how Nigeria and other fast-growing African nations handle their explosive growth, World Population Day gives us all a chance to reflect on the dramatic human shifts that will reshape our globe in the decades to come. There you go. So we have the penetrating analysis of Business Insider with this quote uh, from an economist from the UN Population Fund that, you know, doubling the population of Nigeria again might come with growing pressure on the environment. If Business Insider, that I spent literally less than five minutes. Okay, this is, you know, I'm trying to remember back my five years of journalism training. If, if, if this reporter had wanted to spend less than five minutes, he could have come up with a few little factoids about Nigeria. Here is one. Nigeria has no surviving rhinos, no surviving giraffes, or no surviving cheetahs, and now has fewer than 50 lions, fewer than 100 gorillas, fewer than 500 elephants, and fewer than 2,300 chimpanzees left in the wild. I, I cannot imagine that there's 2,300 uh, chimpanzees left in, in, in Nigeria. My guess is if I had spent another uh, five minutes uh, looking up uh, these different animals, I would have found that 
as recently as 41 years ago that there were rhinos, giraffes, and cheetahs in Nigeria, and there were a hell of a lot more than 50 lions, 100 gorillas, and 500 elephants uh, in, in, in that country. I have zero doubt about this. Zero. Uh, th th this is not a wild guess. <clears throat> there is no way, no way that in the year 2050 that the country of Nigeria will have one surviving lion left in the wild. It will not have one surviving gorilla left in the wild. Will not have one surviving elephant in the wild. 2,300 chimpanzees again. Uh, I don't believe it for a minute but they will be in the stew pot as well. Uh, and in this Manga Bay rant that I was doing from this chair a few days ago, uh, they were talking about, you know, this big national park in, uh, in Nigeria, how it, it is just being overrun uh, by starving planet nibblers who have nowhere else to go to feed themselves. Well, they have one other place to go, and that's to the, to the local uh, you know, food aid center, uh, where if, this, if Business Insider had spent one more minute in research, would have find the, found the very questionable statistic that Nigeria received only 1.1 billion dollars in foreign food aid uh, last year. Uh, I, I, I don't believe that any more than I believe there's 2,300 chimpanzees. A hell of a lot more than 1.1 billion dollars of foreign food aid went to, to feed this skyrocketing population of Nigerians that never should have been born. And when you're talking about doubling the population, what do you think this means for foreign food aid donations? And what do you think that this means for every one of the remaining earthlings that Nigeria uh, shares this planet with? And what's bad for Nigeria is bad for every other one of these sub-Saharan African countries. Okay. Uh, if Business Insider had wanted to spend one more minute, uh, they could have shared this factoid. <clears throat> the World Food Program is assisting some 2.1 million vulnerable people in Nigeria in 2023. The United, the UN World Food Program says over 25 million, over 25 million Nigerians may face acute hunger at the peak of the lean season later this year, whatever the lean season is in Nigeria. And, of course, if, uh, if Business Insider had wanted to spend one more minute researching, they would have come up with this factoid from Nigeria. The current net migration rate, uh, wait a minute, uh, okay, what, all right. According to the UN Department of Economic and Social Affairs, international migrants, not even talking about inside Nigeria, this is how many 
Nigerians got their black asses to Honkyville, mostly. According to the UN Department of Economic and Social Affairs, international migrants from Nigeria in 2020 uh, totaled 1.7 million, a substantial rise from 990,000 in 2010. In 20, so the last year they have the figures for 2020, 1.7 million Nigerians, the vast majority of them I'm guessing are young unemployed males, uh, you know, getting their black asses to Honkyville. Uh, 1.7 million, up from 990,000 in 2010. <clears throat> in 2016, Canada, this is an article out of Canada, in 2016, Canada granted about 4,400 Nigerians permanent residence. That figure soared to over 15 thousand in 2021. So let's just listen to a few of the comments about all of the good things to say about Nigeria. Uh, let's go listen to all of these racists because you know if you uh, if you say that uh, that there's too many people being born in Nigeria and Sub-Saharan Africa in general and that it is not a good thing for the planet for this to be happening. You are a racist. You are a eugenicist. Uh, and, and I love it in the comments uh, how the right-wingers are, are blaming it on the lefties uh, and the lefties are blaming it on the right. It has nothing to do with whether the, the, the population in Nigeria has absolutely zero to do with the political uh, affiliation of Americans. Nothing. How, they, how these morons on both sides of the fence pointing the finger, uh, it, 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 that, that's a whole nother rant for a, another, let's hear from a right winger, <clears throat> you, you know, uh, right wingers, the, the people who do not support Planned Parenthood, who are always complaining about Planned Parenthood, asking the question, does Planned Parenthood have a presence in Nigeria? If not, why not? I'll tell you one reason why not, you stupid, clueless, moron right-winger, is that Donald Trump uh, withdrew every last penny of birth control funding to, uh, to Africa. Completely, it, it, the, the, the tiny bit uh, uh, of money we were sending to birth control uh, programs in uh, Sub-Saharan Africa were rescinded by Donald Trump and I'm 99.99% sure that Joe Biden has never started them back up. Okay, this is the reason you don't see Planned Parenthood about the presence in Nigeria. Is foreign aid to this country measured by its birth rate? This is global suicide. These people cannot feed themselves now and are migrating by the millions. And it seems to be almost celebrated by the left. Yes. <clears throat> Okay, here is Michael. Can we stop helping all the countries in the world and 
blah, 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 talking about foreign food aid. Here is Lily. I am sure each family consists of a happily married father and mother who work hard to raise, feed, medicate, educate, house, etc., each of their 10 plus children without the help of handouts from Western countries. Here is Nigeria will always be a third world country populated by third world people. They will not be able to feed all these new people, so they will try to emigrate to Europe and North America. African immigration will destabilize the entire world and make life worse for everyone. Okay. Uh, they breed like rats even though they can't clothe or feed them. How about send them some birth control? Yes. Here is Mark. Just more mouths the developed Western countries will have to feed as none of those countries can feed themselves. Yep, yep, yep. Here is birth control or half of them will starve to death. Uh, this one I've been hearing and, and I support Devin. This will never happen. This will never happen. There simply is not enough food, water, or other basic natural resources. These so-called experts making these projections are out of touch with basic reality. Uh, I think we've already heard from this dude Humpty Dumpty. It's kind of implied in the rant. We don't need to repeat that. Uh, here is 60% of the population of, of Nigeria will have zero chance in the economy of the 21st century. Uh, here is the way things are going mankind will not be around in 2050. <laughs> How about Hades? Hades. Oh my goodness, we already have 8 billion population on this planet. We should reduce population, not increase it. Stop making babies. How about uh, Jeff? Somebody needs to fix the water. Wink, wink. How about Professor? Alarming. They are reproducing like rabbits. How many more plant and animal species will go extinct over the next 10 years? years, but we are going to let Steve, Steve is going to wrap up this broken record rant. Take it away, Steve. Eight billion people on this planet and 155 million new ones born every year. Our world is headed for a big mess and there is nothing anyone can do about it. Enjoy it while you can. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. The world is headed for a big mess. There is nothing anyone can do about it. Enjoy it while you can. And that is really all that is left to say about this.
And uh, anyway, I really am going to come uh, back tomorrow with my noble savage rant about the latest uh, research coming in in the overkill hypothesis. Bye, guys.